All right, so this is a lab that is based solely on the fact that some of you guys are very visual learners and some of you guys are just, they don't want the math and this won't help you at all. I hope this will help about 80% of you and the other 20 of you. I'm sorry, this is very helpful for your peers. I hope it helped me when I was an undergrad. Um, and so I remember my teacher gave us puzzle pieces, kind of like the ones you're going to use today, except for they were very rudimentary, kind of cut out. There were only a couple options. I tried to expand on what I remember doing in undergrad and giving it to you guys. Um, so it is my hope that this lab reinforces the concept of how you convert between moles, molecules, grams, moles of one compound to moles of another. Um, and it kind of makes it a way for you to easily go from one substance to another. Um, that being said, don't feel like this is entirely restricted to a lab activity. Whenever I did this when I was an undergrad, I used this for all of my practicing, all of my homework. So if you find this experience to be helpful, feel free to use it when you're doing conversions and mastering chemistry. So that being said, I'm going to put that away and I'm going to show you the cards. So these are puzzle pieces that you will cut out from the PDF. The PDF has two options. It is a six page document. And the first three pages are in color and the next three pages are in black and white. It's your choice. You don't need all six pages. Okay, so don't spend your time cutting out six pages of, of stuff. If you only have a black and white printer, print this one. If you have color, this one is better. Okay, so you're going to want to print this off, cut out all of the pieces. You will have 15 pieces. And these are the 15 pieces shown here. And so when you're looking at this, you've got the darker colors, which are more of the bookends. Then you'll notice all of the blue correlate with a B compound, and all of the orange correlate with an A compound. A and B are just placeholders for whatever molecule you're given in the chem chemical conversion, the chemical reaction, okay? The lighter colors are more of your conversion factors. The darker colors are like your answers or your bookends, the things you start with or the things you end up with, all right? But the main thing to note is it is like a puzzle, so pieces go together. If they don't go together, you cannot make them fit, okay? And so what we're trying to do is set up long trains where you're canceling out your equations and you're putting the correct substances in the chemical conversions. So what do I mean by that? So when you print them off, don't feel like you have to get them all fancy and laminated like I did. I figure I'll probably use these for a couple of years. You might just use them for this one assignment or hopefully you'll use them this whole course. Okay, so if you're gonna use them the whole course, what I suggest doing is putting a piece of clear scotch tape over all of the boxes. So anytime you see a box, just put a clear piece of scotch tape. What that will enable you to do, it'll enable you to have a dry erase marker and write on the cards if that's so helpful to you. Okay, um, so once you have that all set up and all put together, that's when you pull out your worksheets. And so your worksheet, this is just two pages I printed out of it. Um, we're going to do two chemical equations and then a whole bunch of questions about that one equation. So these go with the first chemical reaction. And so this equation is one that we're going to look at just using our puzzle pieces. So I wanted to kind of show you how it works. So first off, it asks you to convert all of the things that are inside the balanced chemical equation into um, figuring out which what's magnesium hydroxide, making sure you remember your naming, and then two, having you practice calculating those molecular weights. So that's step one. Once you have all that done, you have everything cut off, now we're going to work on conversions. So the first question says, if you were to ask to convert from grams of magnesium hydroxide to molecules of magnesium hydroxide, which puzzle pieces will you utilize? I don't want you to worry about the marker yet. Okay, I just want you to think about what is out here and put them together in the right order. And then when you're answering it, I just want you to sketch the shapes of the puzzle pieces you used. So in this case, we're going from grams of magnesium compounds to molecules of that same compound. So I want to find my grams piece and then just start connecting it. Okay, and I need to end up with over here molecules and it's of the same compound. So that's where you go from grams of A to molecules of A. So these are the pieces that I'm using. And now just connect them until they're connected together. There should only be one way that it'll work, but I've done that, I've connected them, it works. And now I've got my puzzle pieces. So then just come over here and sketch in that space the puzzle pieces that you utilized. All right, so I literally mean to draw a box, Try and get the general shape. So it's got a box, it's got a triangle, 
This triangle has a little half circle, half circle to a kind of jagged octagony thing. And if I can kind of tell what it is, you are good. Okay, so that's what you're gonna do. And then you're gonna do the same thing for number seven. So number seven asks us to go from molecules to grams. So it is the opposite. So once again, going from molecules to grams. And so find the two bookends first and then make a train that will fill in all of the pieces. Like I said before, there's only one way to go. So you'll notice we just stole the middle piece from the train below it, and now we have its train figured out. Then the next question says, let's try instead, so you would sketch that shape there. And then if you're asked to convert from grams of magnesium hydroxide to grams of water, we now have a different substance involved. That's where you're gonna grab your blue pieces. So from one compound to another, you're gonna switch over to your blues. All right, and I wanna go from grams to grams. So I'm not gonna need these molecule ones. I'm not gonna need any of these pieces. Instead, I'm probably gonna use these. So I don't need my molecules. I'm going from grams of one substance all the way to grams of another substance. So how can I put these together? And it's just like that. And now I've made my train. That's all I want you to do. Because now that you've made the train, now you can start filling in these pieces. All right, so for instance, let's give one of these a try. I'm gonna work on number 12 with you, which is 3.29 times 10 to the 25th molecules of phosphoric acid react with excess magnesium hydroxide. How many molecules of magnesium phosphate would be produced? So in this case, you're going from molecules to molecules, but it's molecules of one compound to molecules of another. So let's swap in our puzzle pieces. And let's actually write on these things. So notice I started grabbing the wrong one, but then it didn't fit, so now it works. Okay, so I'm going from molecules of one compound to molecules of another. This is where I get my dry erase marker out. And I'm gonna write in here 3.29 times 10 to the 25th, okay? Then notice there's nothing to write in this puzzle piece. This one is moles of A. So this is where you get your calculator out and you're gonna type it in. Now make sure, I really recommend that you use the EE button. So 3.29 times 10 to the 25th. And the reason for it is, is if you forget to put parentheses in, it will help it, it'll, it'll still do order of operation correctly for you. So I'm gonna divide it by 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. It's gonna keep those parentheses for me, making it so whenever I took 3.29 cent to the 25th and divided it by this number, it's gonna keep them with order of operations properly, giving me a final answer, which I can write in the next square. So 54.63, all right? So that's the first step. Now I need to go here. And if you notice, in these boxes, I have a little asterisk. So the asterisk is gonna tell me mole ratio from balanced chemical equation. So back to my thing, I'm gonna write on here. So my A was, I'm going from phosphoric acid, so H3PO4, you can write it even there if you want to, to B, which is going to be magnesium phosphate, Okay, and this comes from the chemical equation. So if I look at my balanced chemical equation, what I'm looking at here is I have a two in front of my phosphoric acid, and I have a one in front of my magnesium phosphate. So two in front of phosphoric acid, one in front of magnesium phosphate. So now I'm just gonna take my previous answer, and I'm gonna divide it by my two to give me 27.32 approximately. I'm gonna write that here. Okay, now keep going. So now it says take that number, multiply it by 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Type that in and I get 1.65 times 10 to the 25th. And that is my final answer. And now you would just go in and write down all of these numbers 
onto your worksheet and you are finished with it. All right, so then you can erase it, start all over with a new problem, but using your puzzle pieces to kind of help you make sure you're not forgetting a step. Um, and I hope, I really hope that this is helpful to you. Uh, do ask me if you have any questions. Basically at the end, you're gonna turn in your worksheet and I also want to have a picture of you with your puzzle pieces connected for a problem. So you can even say problem number 12, take a picture of it. Okay, so you're gonna, this will be the one lab where you're able to submit a PDF of your worksheet and one picture of you. Okay, so those are the two things that I need for completion of this lab. Thank you.